In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's beloved people. Today is Saturday, the 21st of November, 2020. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed. It is with so much delight and honor having you in our company. Thanks for joining us. The Church celebrates the memorial of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive of the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verses 4 to 12. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 20, verses 27 to 40. I read from the gospel. Some Sadducees, those who argue, that there is no resurrection, approached Jesus and they put this question to him. Master, Moses prescribed for us that if a man's married brother dies childless, the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Well then, there were seven brothers. The first, having married a wife, died childless. The second, and then the third, married the widow and the same with all seven. They died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman herself died. Now, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be since she had been married to all seven? Jesus replied, The children of this world take wives and husbands, but those who are judged worthy of a place in the other world and in the resurrection from the dead do not marry because they can no longer die, for they are the same as the angels, and being children of the resurrection, they are children of God. And Moses himself implies that the dead rise again in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him Everyone is alive. Some scribes then spoke up. They said, Well put, Master. They did not dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Down through the ages we saw you As a master, not as a friend Be a promoter of life Be a promoter of life. Beloved of God, talking about the end of the church year vis-à-vis -vis the end of the world and the end of time, we may almost get into despair that life ends in death. I know many people who are worried sick about death. But no, no. We shouldn't. For every believer, life does not end in death. Some people in fact do think life ends in death. They think there is no afterlife. So they propagate the doctrine that do all you can hear. Enjoy life to the fullest, for afterlife is death. They don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. So they live lives without God. According to them, enjoying life means to live life without God. Do all the things your body craves for, because after life is death. But this should not be a Christian thinking. In today's gospel passage, Jesus says, God is a God of the living, not of the dead. For to him, in fact, all men are alive. This verse makes the point that God created people to live for Him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 We belong to God. We are His. In basic catechism, we were taught that God made us for Himself to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him, and at the end, to be happy with Him forever in heaven. Our destination is heaven, to be with God forever. And dead people don't praise God. Psalm 115 verse 17 and Isaiah chapter 38 verse 18. Therefore, life cannot end in death. For how can the dead praise God? Our faith teaches us of a resurrection. Jesus himself rose from death. Therefore, dear friends, after this earthly life, there is the afterlife. Death to life on earth is a passage to life in eternity. Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. John chapter 10 verse 10. This is against the Sadducees and some of their kind in today's world who think and believe there is no resurrection. They approach Jesus in today's gospel and queried him because he spoke of a resurrection, and they brought the example of a woman who married seven brothers. But Jesus tells them, yes, there is a resurrection. The difference is, life on earth is completely different from the afterlife. Here on earth, we may marry, we may take wives and husbands because of the desires of the flesh. But in the afterlife, we become like the angels. There is no need for all that. But it doesn't cancel the fact that there is an afterlife. Dear friends, life is one of God's first gifts to us. Today's gospel passage invites us then to do two things. First, to appreciate life. Appreciate your life and appreciate the lives of others. And second, do not fear death because death is a gateway into even happier and better life. Dear God's good people, God made us for Him and gave us life. He shared His life with us when He breathed the breath of life into the human person after creation. Confess Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Ask yourself today then, how do you appreciate the life that God has given you? And how do you appreciate the lives of others. No one, nobody has the right to take away the life of another, not even your own life, because it doesn't belong to you. Your life is not your own. It was given to you by God. Today, dear friends, let us ask ourselves 
how do we live our lives? The choices we make in this earthly life will determine our life year after. The dead cannot praise God, only the living. Life in heaven, lived by angels and saints, is a life of entire praise and worship given to God. How do you use your earthly life? Do you use it praising and glorifying God? Or do you use it only doing things that give God dishonor and discredit Him? Do you use your time to praise God or you don't even have time for Him? The manner in which we live our lives in honor and right conduct gives praise to God. Our entire lives should be a praise song to God in the things we do, in the things we say, the way we dress, the way we carry ourselves around. We are expected, therefore, beloved of God, to give respect to all human life. God is the giver of life, and He alone, only He, determines when that life ends on earth, from conception to death. All forms of killing are therefore prohibited. Genocide, suicide, euthanasia or mercy killing, and murder. In his fifth commandment, God instructs us, Thou shall not kill. Confer Exodus chapter 20 verse 13 and Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 17. Abortion is murder. Some people argue that a fetus is not a human person and so has no human life. But the prophet Jeremiah reminds us, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I appointed you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. So the argument that a fetus is not a human person is limping. Because even before we were formed, God knew us. And even in our mother's womb, he knows us. How can we therefore destroy life in the womb that is already known by God? Destroying that life is destroying life created by God. Humane Vitae, the encyclical letter of Pope St. Paul the Sith, exalts us to respect the dignity of human life. In number 27 of the document, the Pope addresses doctors and nurses who have the prerogative and the duty to protect life and not destroy it. This has led to pro-life movements. Living in a world where human life almost means nothing. Living in a world where killing has become a hobby. Living in a world where people take away human life with no blinking. People spill human blood with such ease. We need to be pro-lifers. We need to promote and protect human life. God is a God of the living and not of the dead. In our daily choices, let us make options that promote, protect and save life. Sometimes we see people in desperate situations like accidents, battling between life and death, and most onlookers rather take out their cell phones to videotape while human beings are battling between life and death. Oh, dear God's good people, what is your attitude towards human life? There are many ways of killing. It could be direct or indirect. Direct killing through euthanasia, through murder, through abortion, through suicide. It could also be indirect. When you do things that put people's lives into danger, dear friends, you have committed murder. You have killed them. When you take things that belong to them and that destroys their future, you have killed them. Let us today, therefore, examine ourselves. How many times have we killed people directly or indirectly? How many times have we spoiled people's names, which is another way of killing them? Let us tell God we are sincerely sorry. And let us make reparation. And let us also make restitution for sin. And from this day, let us pledge that we shall all be pro-lifers to protect, to defend, and to save human life. For every human life is sacred, and the God we worship is a God of the living and not of the dead. Amen. We wish each and every one of you a happy weekend and a happy feast of tomorrow. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>